Hi, we're back and we're going to paint the fur on the raccoon using a quarter inch Filbert Raker comb brush. You'll see them by either name. And I'm using the neutral gray mixed with a little water to make it fluid on the brush. When you load the brush, you want to push down and kind of twist the brush back and forth a little bit and that'll spread these um, comb bristles out. So you get nice little fine hair strokes. Mm -hmm. You may need to play with the consistency of the paint, how much water you need to add. But we're going to go over the raccoon with this neutral gray. Pull your strokes in the direction of the hair growth. And this gray will be a little lighter than our dark areas that we've based. And just a little darker than the light areas. Be sure on the edges that you pull out over your background to create that furry edge. So I'm going to speed up the video and um, show you all my strokes. But it gets a little repetitious to sit here in real time and watch me do this. So I'll slow down when I I'm doing something that I need to comment on. Next we're going to add fur strokes with black. So I'm adding a little bit of water to the black and loading my comb brush or rake brush and you'll just need to adjust how much paint and water you need. I've got a little too much so I'm pulling some out and we're going to start stroking over our dark areas with this black fur. And Again, as you come to the edges of these areas, pull out over, in this case, we're pulling out over the lighter areas, and that will create this little furry edge to give the effect of um, all the hair on the raccoon. Thank you. 
Okay, we've added the gray and the black strokes to the raccoon's fur. Now we want to add um, a lighter value, so we're going to start with white. And this is sort of the same process for loading the rake brush with uh, some watery white. So you'll need to, again, play with your paint consistency and spread those bristles out. And we're going to start stroking over the raccoon again with this lighter value of hair. So I'm starting here in the light area above the mask. I find it easier to add this light value over the lights before we start working into any of the darks. So you want to keep your edges furry. So I'm pulling back into that dark mask a little bit and then pulling out into that darker area above. And as we start working on these uh, later stages, be sure you watch the shape of your areas so you can make any corrections as you're pulling in these more refined strokes. If something looks a little bit unbalanced or out of kilter, you can shape things up. Now I'm working up to the ear. I didn't want to cross over to the other side because I didn't want to get my hand in the wet paint and smear it. So I'm going to work up here on the ear. And you want this lighter edge around the tips of the ear. I'm going to fast forward through some of these light strokes and then slow down and check back in. the ear meets the head or is attached you know right in front of this dark center area I want to separate and add a little dimension here so I want to just a lighter value here at the bottom of the inner ears so I'm not using um, straight white I'm using white with a little bit of the the gray mixed into it to just soften that down some. And you can also soften here where the light 
edge of the ears come into the, the dark area. We just want to soften that transition. And I'm going to add a few of these lighter gray strokes in other areas, just where I want to soften transitions, where it's not a not like the face where there's a stark contrast between the different colors of the um, bands on the face. Here on the chest, I want this to have a graduated value from some darks and into some lights. The whole chest isn't dark. We want it kind of darker towards the bottom and just gradually, gradually lighten as we come up towards the face. With a large round brush, I'm going to start refining some of my shapes and clean up this nose a little bit with some black. Just stroking in, trying to even up the shapes. You can go back with a little bit of white if you need to shave some off. So I'm just going around the bottom of this nose and a little on the sides, thinning it out with some white. You just want this to be symmetrical. With this large round brush, I'm adding a little bit of water to some white, and I want to sort of scrub or just kind of dabble in some stronger highlights of white in these bands around the face. So it's kind of almost washing it in. If you get too much paint on your brush, just wipe some out and soften those edges down. It's sort of a watercolor -y effect. We can still see our hair strokes through the white, but this just brightens it up. this on the other side also. You can see I'm just scribbling the, the white over the, the band, wiping the brush and then softening the edge. I'm going to do this on the, I should call this the muzzle around the nose and mouth. So I'm laying the, the paint close to the nose and under the nose and wiping my brush. And I'm going to soften this outer edge. So you can see how I keep turning my brush so the points towards the center and softening the edge of that white out. It's almost sort of like a float, but with a, a round brush. With a little bit of the gray, I'm going to just streak in a shadow under our mouth. If it gets too strong, or you just you can soften it out again. Wipe your brush and then just 
drag it along that bottom edge and remove some of the paint. going to lighten the edges of the ear. I'm keeping this right towards the center. And you can soften that out into your hair strokes. Add some white on the shoulder. Any place we want to add a little stronger highlight. So I'm just dabbing that in on the lower arm. If you want it stronger, just add a little bit more and then soften those edges out. And just keep adjusting by adding a little more wherever you feel like you want a little stronger value. On this back edge of the shoulder, I'm lightening that. I, I want that to kind of soften into that background. And a little soft highlight of white at the top of the nose. Trace on the outlines for your eyes and then with a 20 aught script liner, I'm just very finely outlining them with white. Adding a little highlight at the top right of white. Just that little shine mark in the eye and a little crescent stroke at the bottom left. Okay, with a little bit of the gray and, a, and the white, we're going to brush mix up just a soft, dirty white and Go over this outlining around the eye just to reinforce it a little bit. As you're working, just be sure to pay attention to your shape. Make sure each eye stays approximately the same shape. I'm going back over the outlining one more time with some thinned white. 
keep this uh, pretty thin. See, I'm adding water to the, the paint. This is just to highlight that outlining a little brighter. And we're going to reinforce these sparkles in the eye by touching them up again. With some thin back black I'm gonna, on the line of brush, I'm going to start just adding some of my detail fur lines. And first I'm going to thin the black with some water and start pulling little strokes around the outer edge of the raccoon's ears. and some along the inner edge of the ears. I'm working here to soften the ears where they attach to the head. You repeat that on the the second ear. And again, watch to keep your ears the same shape. And make little adjustments, little fine adjustments as you're doing this. And work down around the outer edges. And any place you want to add a little detail. Here on the mask, I wanted to pull some little fine hairs up farther to give it a just a little bit more of a jaggedy edge. Sort of like little eyebrows. Little eyebrow hair sticking up out of here. Again, this is kind of where you can fine-tune the shape of things.
Under the mouth, we can pull some little short strokes just to redefine that mouth a little more. Just following that previous little shading that we added. And we can continue pulling little strokes around the muzzle. Here I'm kind of pulling back from the black into the white to give that edge of the white a furry look. I'm going to pull here under the face or neck and kind of soften that black band into the lighter band below. Reload your brush as needed. But we want to just soften this transition a little bit. going to pull some hairs here on the chest and I'm pulling these a little longer and kind of varying the direction just to make them look a little more kind of like little wild hairs giving more texture and making it look like longer fur spreading out here. I'm going to continue on just adding some little detail strokes here along the outer edge of the raccoon's body and following under his kind of suggestion of an arm here that's reaching in towards the tree. And I'll jump around and now that these hairs on the chest have dried, I'm going to go back and see that I I want to add some more. You can stop and just reassess your painting every once in a while, decide where you want more detail. I'm going to pull a little out here from going up the nose and, you know, all the way up onto the forehead. I'm going to reinforce these little tufts of hair I have going from the mask up into the band of white. Then I'm going to go back with white, you know, in the same manner. In any place I want to reinforce some of these white strokes, I'm going to work along edges of the bands to add a little more detail and shape to things. Whatever you do on the left, you're also going to do on the right, but with the angle of the camera in my hand, it's hard to see the things I'm doing on the side towards the tree, so I'll just speed through this a little bit.
you're going to continue adding these white fur strokes um, just everywhere we want to add more detail on the chest on the shoulder around the muzzle here I'm highlighting under the mouth so this is very repetitious so I'm going to um, speed up the video so you can watch what I'm doing but I don't think there is any need for me to describe each step of the way these are all just little white hair strokes, reloading your brush as needed. decided to go back and soften down these ears just a little bit so I'm using the neutral gray and I'm just pulling little fine strokes from the edge in towards the white what I'm trying to do is narrow this band of white highlight in the center of the ears so I'm just going to pull some little strokes in on each side and soften that down a little bit Before we add the snow, um, we want to add a little bit of shading to set this, the raccoon back in the space a little bit. So I'm floating or side loading a, a flatter angle brush with some of the, the medium or the neutral gray and a little black. And I'm just gonna float this down on the raccoon's body where he comes up against the tree. So this will help set him back behind that tree a little. You can also add a little bit of this float to other areas that you want to shade a little bit. I'm also doing some adjustments where I feel like the shape of my the band on the outer edge of the face needs to come up a little bit. I'm just using a big round brush and pulling some white strokes out to to blend that into the dark band at the top. I'm 
This is the time to make any corrections you want before we begin putting our snow on the canvas. We have one more little thing we're going to do before um, we start that process in the next video. And I want to do a little bit more shading on the tree. I'm using a half inch flat or angle brush and I'm going to side load a little bit of, of black on the bottom of the tree branches. We just sort of want to separate this from the light area of the raccoon in the back and also add a little more shading on the, the top branch. Now with a little bit of the neutral gray and black, let's also float a little bit on the raccoon's arm underneath the bottom branch. Just want to darken that edge a little bit and push him behind the branch. Do it on top along the branch also. Finally, we're going to switch back to a 20 out liner brush and with some thinned black, we're going to do some detailed line work on the tree. So I'm just going to do just a little fine outlining along the edges of these um, shaded areas on the tree. Extend some of them out across the tree and this is just to crisp up the edges and give a little detail. This is the last bit of detail we're going to do to our canvas before we add the snow. So you can bring yourself up to this point and we'll stop here and let our canvas dry and in the next video we'll come back and add our snow flurries.